Growing up, I had dreams and aspirations, but always felt like the kid that didn't fit in. For the most part, I wasn't a bad kid, but when I made the transition into adulthood, I turned to the streets for guidance. This led to getting locked up in juvenile hall, doing time in CYA, and eventually a 120-month sentence in federal prison. I had a lot of time to think and reflect during my federal sentence, so I share with you what I learned, hoping I can positively influence someone else's life with Prison Talk. What's up, everybody? This is Big Hurt with Prison Talk, and thank you for tuning in to another episode. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at freshhouseseries at gmail.com and we'll get back to you and hopefully we can answer your question. And I want to say thank you for supporting our channel because of you guys, we're almost at 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. I had a question from one of our viewers. What do you do if the shot caller asks you to do something that could possibly add more time to your sentence? Well, that's a tough one because sometimes there's situations that require you to act no matter how how bad you don't want to act you know um for example you know i was doing time at a particular spot and uh you know i used to sit with a certain group of people well some shit kicked off with this group of people with another click and basically the group of people i sat with you got rolled up you know they had to they didn't get rolled up but they had to um basically lead the the institution transferred them so everybody that was my homie in this particular group was no longer sitting there. And I was the only one there. So I had to figure out where I was going to sit at and who was going to, you know, allow me to basically participate in whatever situation was going on. And so I ended up having to sit with a group of guys and this group of guys that I sat with was part of a certain clique another click and um, one of the guys who was my who um, eventually became my celly was a part of this click and so due to that I had to ride you know what I'm saying I would have had to ride if anything jumped off with my celly because me and him were cellies you know there's no free passes when you're in there and you have a cellmate that's you know what I'm saying basically your other eyes and ears um, while you're doing time. And so I was allowed to sit at this particular table, eat with these gentlemen, and, um, you know, basically chop it up with them on the yard. But um, because of my association with these guys, you know, other cliques in prison looked at me a particular way. So it did cause, you know, it, it, it had the potential to cause a lot of tension. And like I said, um, if anybody would have tried to run up on my celly, you know, run up in our cell, I would have split their motherfucking wig. And so it put me in a position where even though I was trying to do my time, no matter how bad you want to do your time, sometimes you got to you got to roll with it. And there was times where we, you know, we, we had to hide, hide the stash, man. You know what I'm saying? Had to had to shank. Had to, you know, tuck, tuck whatever, tuck whatever it was, you know what I'm saying? In a place where the popos couldn't find it because that was what was part of going along with that particular program. So, you know, when you, when you go back to the question, you know, if a shot caller asks you to do something, well, if you're socializing with this particular group of people, you can't get a free pass. There is no free pass, man. And if you're a loner, eventually, you know, shit can kick off and, you know, you might be out there alone getting fucked up. And um, for the most part, you know, if you mind your business, and you know, you, you do your time, you can kind of avoid a lot of conflict, but sometimes conflict's inevitable, you know? And when, it, when it's like that, you gotta just be prepared, man. And um, like I said, you gotta make choices in there that are the best choices for you. And if you're a bigger guy, yeah, a lot of times, you know, and you gotta rep, you know, people aren't really pushing you to do shit you don't wanna do. But, um, you know, if you're at an institution where there's a lot of tension, um, you know, there's a lot of shit jumping off politics wise, then, you know, there might be times where, yeah, you, you gotta, you know, you, you gotta stash the, you know, the poker in your, in your cell, you gotta walk with the poker to the yard, or you gotta pick something up from somebody on the yard and transport it to another part of the yard or <clears throat> bring something to the chow hall. That's just how it is. So 
if the shot caller asks you to do something, yeah, you might have to do it. You know what I mean? No matter how tough you are, no matter how independent you are, because um, that's just a part of the game, man. You're in there, you're doing time, and like I said, everybody's vulnerable. You know what I mean? Anybody could be taken out by the right motherfuckers in there. I don't give a fuck how tight your, your hands are or what kind of skills you think you got. They got six, seven motherfuckers running up on you. Hey, man, <laughs> you better be able to fly because um, shit's going down. 